Core Side Seats, TSN Senior Hockey Reporter Frank Saravelli, and you survived Trade Center. Barely. I think I need a gallon of red wine in about 10 minutes. Ooh. Perfect. We should have done that 10 minutes ago <laughs> and then right. interviewed you. Uh, Eric Carlson, he doesn't get dealt. Uh, is this should Sens fans relax and say, okay, he's going to be here long term? What's going to go on with him? No chance. I mean, you look at the way that this played out, and now it gets more difficult for the Ottawa Senators because you look at it in the summer, they start to lose quite a bit of control because Eric Carlson is all of a sudden getting closer to July 1. Not only can he start to leak where he might want to sign an extension, but also the Sens are going to be able to get less because they're going to have to talk mainly you would think to teams that Eric Carlson is interested in going to. So I think that was one of the reasons that um, the Ottawa Senators considered ripping that Band-Aid off today because it looked like it might be getting to a point eventually where Eric Carlson says, I don't want to resign here. But you heard Pierre Dorian uh, immediately after, he seemed to you know, try and push this in the opposite direction saying, look, if Eric Carlson is an Ottawa Senator, we'd like to offer him a contract. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't they? How do we get to this point? Yeah, how do we get yeah. to this point? I, I, I'm baffled. The guy is 27 years old. I, I keep going back to the night, the magical night on Parliament Hill where Eugene Melnick was politicking. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Basically, the way that entire thing started before he went on his rant, we're all sitting there waiting to talk to Eugene Melnick. We're thinking he's going to talk about his charity, how big of a weekend this is for the Sens on Parliament Hill. And he goes, what can I do for you, boys? And we're just like, oh, get your pen out and your notepad <laughs> out. This is going to be fun. And since then, the things that he said, and I think most poignantly, this team is not going to be a cap team, and they wanted to try and do everything they could to shave salary. When he said, I'm not going to continue writing checks for this team yeah. out of my hard-earned money, like, and I'm considering moving this team, Like, what a message to send to that city that already wasn't, and that market that already wasn't buying tickets. Now all of a yeah. sudden, you're in a really tough spot. And then today they were, were so close to ripping Sens hearts fan Sens hearts Sens fans hearts out. Uh, your over under for deals on trade deadline day was 15 and a half. And uh, regu it. regular viewers of our show know I always take the over, so I said everyone take the over, and it hit 16. You never want to be the guy taking the under and Do praying they don't no. score. No, yeah. it's not. It's, it's not as much. It's not fun. a way to live. Yeah. Exactly. So, Thank you. That's my philosophy. So biggest surprise. Biggest surprise. Um, I would say that Paul Stastny was dealt. The way the Blues punted on this season was a yeah. bit surprising to me. Uh, a team that entered the standings one point out, or entered today's deadline one point out in the standings of a playoff spot. You heard Braden Shen's comments. Yeah, he wasn't happy. No, he wasn't, and understandably so. What kind of message does that send to your team? And the other one was the Vegas Golden Knights and the move that they, not only getting so close to Eric Carlson, but then after that pulling the trigger on Thomas Tatar a first, second, and third round pick, and I know Vegas had an extra supply of picks from the expansion draft and everything that happened there, but wow. I mean, the <laughs> Stastny deal comes out of nowhere in a way because uh, I, I read somewhere that the Blues weren't even really considering dealing him until this recent losing streak, and then all of a sudden Doug Armstrong just pulls the trigger. And you gotta appreciate Kevin Chevel day off kind of laying in the weeds. He, he doesn't make a ton of moves, but when he does, he really goes for A ton of moves. Like, I think people were wondering in Winnipeg <laughs> if he had a pulse for a while because yeah. he had four trades in four years. And you're saying, what is he going to do to help push this team over the top? And I know that their window is just opening in Winnipeg, and fans are really excited for this cup contender. But I think they really needed that extra piece down the middle. Derek Broussard was a the guy they were really deep in talks on. That fizzled out. Of course, he went to the Pittsburgh Penguins, and you're saying, well, what do they do next? And I'm thinking at a certain point during this day that maybe they just don't do anything. And then what happens? This is a franchise that still doesn't have a playoff win. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a big move for that team, solidifying themselves down the middle. I really think they went into this needing a center, and they filled a big void. Um, what did producer Tim say? Oh, it's next? time for trade lurkers because, you know, oh, Frank, okay. did you see our trade lurkers segment I, do during... Do you know that I live in fear of being a scrum lurker? Oh, well... Hey, by the way, do you know how many bullets I take for you guys? Because you guys have oh, your, no, your scrum mad? lurkers and you'll catch, like, a PR guy in there yeah. and I'll be walking through yes. the hallway and they'll be yes. like, hey, you work for TSN, why am I on scrum lurkers? Yes. And I'm like... What do I have to do well, with you this? Well, you might make it on Maybe this one. I just, I, what do, I have nothing to do with this. No, but so you thank do, you. Frank. You're part, you're part of the family now. This you might exciting. be a part of this. I'm hoping you might be. This is today, because we did another one from previous years, but this is today.
Trade Center 18 version of NHL Trade Merchant. NHL. You Trade did make an appearance, but I have make to say, Daryl Sutter, who I thought actually went back to Alberta at one point <laughs> during the day, like he was gone at about 10 a.m., made a lot of appearances in <laughs> Trade Lurkers today. It was actually cool having Coach Sutter here today. It was. He's got some good stories. He does. Oh, yeah. He does. Um, Frank, this is awesome having you here. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to not <laughs> doing any trade bait lists because it seems like that's all I've been known for over these last few weeks. They can stop bugging me until at least June, It's I think. better to be known for something than known for nothing. I don't know. Everyone's That's, that's another thing I keep taking trade uh, bullets for is the trade bait list. Teams are saying, why is this guy so low? <laughs> Do you not understand how it works by now? How long have we been doing this? Yeah, exactly. Tyson Berry at number 45. I always kept thinking, do you feel bad if you're the last He's guy the on the trade train? bait lurker. Yeah, he is the trade bait lurker. Frank Saravelli, thank you. When we come back, who are the winners and losers on deadline day? And a prestigious Janney Award on our return to North America.